Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thank you so much for stopping by our channel today. If you're new here, we hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. I love turning old items into new decor. It helps me change up my home style without breaking the bank. In today's video, we have 10 easy hacks to make new home decor using items you may already have or you find at the thrift store. So grab your favorite drink, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this vase that I got from Goodwill Outlet. It was $3.99 at the regular Goodwill store, but I got it for $0.79 cent at the outlet. I love finding vases like this because it doesn't matter what color it is, it makes it perfect for flipping. We're also going to use some twine, some Waverly chalk paint in Snow White, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I saw this vase on the Pottery Barn website and I really like the vase or at least aspects of it, but there's no way that I would spend $62 on a vase, much less $349. I knew that I could get something in a similar shape at the thrift store and be able to do my own thing to it and make my own version. Let's go see how I did. The first thing we're going to do is take our vase and clean it up really well, getting off all those stickers and the price tags. And I also removed those felt feet or at least what was left of them from the bottom because I knew I was going to be painting down there and I didn't want to paint over that. Now I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and one of those round sponge brushes that you get in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I am going to stipple paint all over my vase. I like doing this because it gives you a really good coverage. You don't get those streaky marks if you're like when you use a regular brush and it's also going to give it texture. This texture, once this dries, reminds me of a terracotta vase and that that is what I was going for. So I painted the whole outside and the bottom and then set it aside to dry. Once my paint was completely dry, I grabbed a pencil and I started making marks around my vase. Now, I chose not to make straight marks like the one at the Pottery Barn, but you could absolutely do that. I wanted to give it some of my own personality, so I made wavy marks all the way around. I wasn't worried about them being an even distance or even being symmetrical. I want this to have personality. I also didn't worry about those areas where I missed mark and had to erase because we'll go back and fix that at the end. Now that I have my lines drawn onto my vase, I'm going to come back with my glue gun and put a hot glue line all the way down the line that I drew and then I'll fill that in with my twine. We're going to do this all the way around and when we get to the other side, we'll just trim it off and then we're going to do it all the way down the vase until we get all of our lines completely covered. Now that we have all of our lines covered with our twine, I'm going to come back with my paint and my sponge brush and I'm going to paint back over this, making sure that I cover my twine really well. Now, I did not burn off the hairs from my twine before I painted this and it does give it a messy look to it, but it also gives it more texture and I kind of like that. But if the messiness of it bothers you, you can just take a lighter and run around this and burn off all of those little hairs and it's going to give you a smoother look. Once you do this and you get your paint on here, we're going to set it aside to dry and our vase will be ready to display in our home. You can change out your flowers for the different seasons and this will work all year round. Hey 
y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old sign that I picked up at Goodwill Outlet. It was $5 when it was at the regular Goodwill, but I only paid 89 cents for it at the outlet. Now, it did have a picture on the front of it that was paper, but my husband sanded it down smooth for me. I'm also going to use these words that I cut out using my laser cutter. Now, I know that not most people have a laser cutter, so I am going to include a link for the SVG for this file as well as the JPEG. And that way, if you have a cutting machine, you can do vinyl to make this or you can use the trace method that we have shown y'all so many times acrylic paint in snow white and pink parfait and a black permanent marker and some super glue wood glue the first thing i'm going to do is paint my sign with my parfait pink paint now this was the closest that i could find to the Minnie mouse pink and it was the one that my granddaughter really liked and this is for her room i did have to do two coats on this to get it where it wasn't streaky while my paint is drying, I'm going to work on my wording. Now, I wanted a stained look, or I knew I wanted it to be black so that it would pop off. So I'm using my Jot Permanent Markers. Now, I do this a lot. I really like the way that it comes out. I've also been known to use the furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree, but my stores have been out lately and I don't have any black ones on hand and I knew that this was even going to give me a richer look. Now you can use paint and a brush, but it has a tendency to get on the sides and it looks messy and I just really don't like that. And with this, it always turns out looking really good. Now I will say if you're going to be hanging it where weather can get to it don't use the permanent markers because if they get wet or damp they have a tendency to run I also decided to paint the edge of my sign or fill it in with my marker now of course you can use paint for this but I didn't want to take a chance of getting the black paint onto my pink paint and my marker covered it perfectly and it ended up looking really good it's very sharp and it really pops once you get it on the wall once my pink paint was dry, I started adding my polka dots. I'm using the white acrylic paint and one of the round sponge brushes from the Dollar Tree. I wasn't worried about making sure that these were a certain space apart. I just randomly added them on here. And once you get your lettering on, it looks really cute. You can't tell that they're not evenly spaced. Now, when I was pouncing my spots on, you can see that there's a little dot in the middle of each one that was an easy fix I just re-dipped my brush into the paint and then spounced over it again and it completely filled it in I did get some on the black but that was an easy touch up I needed to reorient the way my sign hung, so I cut the rope off that was on the back and just stapled it on the right way, and I had an instant hanger for my sign. Now, the last thing I needed to do was add my wording, and depending on how you're going to be doing yours is how you'll proceed from here. Since I'm using the wood pieces, I lined them up the way that I wanted them to be, and then I used my super glue wood glue and just glued them down into place. If you're using vinyl, of course, you're just going to weed it and then transfer it and stick it down. But I also wanted to show you how you can use the trace method to make any sign um, that you would like to have in your home. So you're just going to print off the design that you're wanting to put on your sign, and then you're gonna color on the back of it with a pencil. Make sure that you cover everything really well so that you get good lines. Then you're just going to lay it on your sign, trace over it with a pen or a pencil, and it's going to transfer those lines onto your sign. The last thing you need to do is fill it in. I like using permanent markers for this. It just gives me more control and I have a shaky hand when it comes to painting. But if you have a steady hand, you could use paint and a brush and just fill in your design. And this is a great way to repurpose old signs into to something that you would like to have in your decor. Either way, once you add your lettering to your sign, your project is complete. You have something new for your home at a fraction of the cost.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this old framed home interiors piece that I found at Goodwill Outlet for 99 cent. It's in pretty rough shape. It has a lot of nicks and cuts, but I think it'll be perfect for this project. This letter that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, you can get them at any craft store. Some gift tissue that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some Waverly chalk paint in ivory. Some Mod Podge some various florals at this point i wasn't real sure which ones i wanted to use i knew my color theme so i grabbed some of these from hobby lobby and some that i had left over from last year even some that i had pulled from other projects to see which ones i wanted to use we're going to use some ribbon of choice some sandpaper or a sand block my heavy duty stapler and my glue gun and some glue sticks so the first thing I needed to do was remove this back so that I could get the glass and the picture out of this frame. And y'all, I have to say, home interior stuff was made really well. This thing was a booger to get off. I was finally able to catch an edge and tear off the backing of this, but around those edges, it was glued down. I took my heat gun and tried to get it off. Wasn't happening. I tried sanding it. Yep, wasn't happening. So I took my little screwdriver and I took out the back and then I removed the tabs with my pliers so that I could get the glass out and I took it outside and used my electric sander on it and was finally able to get it all off. Now that it's all off and it's really smooth, I went ahead and I did a little bit of sanding on the front of this too to help with some of the gouges that were there. We are going to give it a good coat of paint. I am using Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and y'all I have to say that just giving this a coat of paint just brightened it up so much and made it look so fresh. I love the shape of this frame. I love all the detail it had in it. So I gave it two good coats front and back and I let it dry. And I do know that a lot of you think I waste paint by painting the back, but that's just a personal preference. And if you're ever going to sell one of your projects, you want the back to be finished. Now we're also going to go ahead and paint our initial. I'm using the same color and I do paint the front, the back and leave this to dry. Now that our frame is dry, I'm going to take a piece of my sandpaper and just kind of lightly go over this and give it some distressing. I didn't want to heavily distress it, but I love how it makes the detail pop out on it and it gives it just that right amount of wear whenever you lightly go over this. While I am working on my frame, I decided to go ahead and put the hanger back on it before we start decorating it. And they had originally put this on with staples, which actually surprised me. So I just grabbed some screws and my screwdriver and put it back on. Now we are going to work on our letter. I'm putting down a coat of Mod Podge on this and I went really light on it because when you're using tissue, you don't want to soak it because it'll cause a lot of wrinkles and bubbles. Then I put my tissue over it and pressed it down. We're gonna trim around it and then I'm gonna use my little squeegee and go over and make sure I got all of my wrinkles out. I'm gonna trim it down just a little more because we're gonna use case fire method on this. But while I was trimming it, I did notice that my edges had dried, probably went too light with my Mod Podge. So I just freshened that up and then reapplied my paper. And now for the fire. Look at that, y'all. This is an amazing method. I love how it worked. It goes all the way down to the edges just like it should. Then we are going to use our brush and we're going to brush off any of the charred remains that are there. Now, it did scorch my edges and that was okay with me because I had not painted those edges yet. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, so that was why I waited on that. So once I had finished brushing everything off, I just painted my edges. It blended in and I thought this looked wonderful. I will definitely be playing with this method more in the future. I love it. Now that everything's dry, we're going to attach our initial to our frame. 
I did change up my ribbon to some thicker ribbon. I thought that it looked better than the thin ribbon that I had. And I just cut off a piece and then figured out how low I wanted my initial to hang and trimmed it. I'm gonna scorch those ends so that it doesn't unravel. Then we're gonna flip it over, find the center, and use our heavy duty staple gun to staple it onto the back. This holds it perfectly. Now we get to decorate our frame, and to me, this is always the most fun part. I am loving this ivy bush that I got from Hobby Lobby. I just think it looks so fresh and springy. So I cut off a piece of it that runs up one side, and I started off using hot glue. I, I glued down the ends of it, and I held it until it dried. And it might have held, but I was a little scared that it wouldn't. So I do end up going in later with my um, staple gun. Now I'm going to work on my flowers. I thought that I would use just those small flowers on this, but since I'm not using ribbon to make a bow for this, I thought it needed something to anchor it. And I loved this large pink flower that I had. So I cut off the stem of it and I glued it in the corner. Then I took those little mini roses that I got from Hobby Lobby, yeah, the ones I'm obsessed with, and I cut off some pieces of those and glued those in. And I was gonna use the dark roses as well, but I had this cherry blossom looking branch and I loved how it looked going up that ivy. So I cut a piece of it and I glued it down and this was where I decided it just might not hold with glue. So I grabbed my staple gun and I put a staple in and if you move your flowers, you really can't see where your staple goes. Then I took some more of those little pink roses and I just kind of glue those in kind of mix them up so it doesn't look so choppy and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side i cut a small piece of that branch staple it in add some more little flowers and then i was through with my decorations the more i looked at this i thought my initial just needed some finishing on it it just looked really raw to me and i love using ink for this so i grabbed an ink pad and my little dauber and i just kind of go around those edges and ink them up to me this finishes it it gives it dimension and it makes it look so much more professional i wanted to add back in some color so i grabbed some pink ink that i had and i just kind of go around those edges coloring it in and once i did that this project was finished Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this cheesecake pan ring that I got from Goodwill Outlet. The bottom was missing, but that's okay because I think we can turn this into something else. Some floral foam from the Dollar Tree, some Rust-Oleum spray paint in hammered dark bronze, some moss from the Dollar Tree, and some florals and greenery from the Dollar Tree and Walmart. So I do think this ring is in really good shape, but I wasn't really feeling that blue color. It is kind of springy, but it doesn't fit my home decor. So we're gonna take it outside, give it several light coats of our spray paint and leave it to dry. Our piece is dry and I think it looks amazing. I love this hammered bronze paint. I just think that it turns these into something really special. Now we'll take our floral foam and we're going to kind of cut it down till it fits the bottom of this pan. And since it is round, you got that gap in there. So I just took my ruler and cut off some small pieces of my foam. And then I use my glue and piece it together. I'm going to be using the Fix All Adhesive Glue from the Dollar Tree. You could use hot glue, but it gets really hot here and I was afraid that it might loosen up. We're going to stick that down and let it dry. 
and then we're going to come in and cover it with some of our moss now for this i am using hot glue i just put some hot glue on there and cover it with the moss and it is really messy but it gives it a finished look if you see anything in between those flowers it looks like grass and it looks way more natural than if you were to catch a glimpse of that floral foam once we have that covered, all you have to do is go in and start adding your florals. Now, y'all knew I was going to use a form of pink, but you can use any color you want to. And you can take things from other pieces that you have in your home. You know, if you're tired of them and want to recycle them, you're just going to stick them in there until you like how they look. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did end up putting way too much in this. It was so crowded. But once I got it hanging on the wall, I was able to edit it, take some of it out, and I loved how it came out. I'm not adding a hanger to mine. I'm just going to sit it on the nail. It holds perfectly. But if you would rather have a hanger, you could punch a hole in the top and use some twine to make a hanger. Or you could even tie some twine to that little piece that locks down at the top. But I like mine just hanging without the twine. Once you get all your florals in, this piece is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this old clock that I found at Goodwill for $3.99 and I was lucky enough to get it for 50% off. A clock face that I printed from the computer, some carbon paper, my jot permanent marker, some chalk paint in white and I also used mineral, a clock kit that I got from Walmart, and a paintbrush. I was looking on Etsy for a clock to hang in my office and I found this one, but I did not want to pay $70. Once I saw this old clock at Goodwill, I knew that I could recreate it. So the first thing we're going to do is take the old clock mechanism out. This does not work, so we're going to have to replace it. And then we're going to take our piece outside and use our electric sander and get as much of this glitter and paint off as we can. Now that our piece is completely sanded, I'm going to give it a good coat of my Waverly white chalk paint. Now, I didn't get all of the paint off of this, and that's okay. I knew that my paint would cover this, but I wanted to get as much of that glitter off as I possibly could. While our paint is still wet, I take my Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral and a chippy brush, and I start brushing over it. Now, this is not dry brushing because I purposely did it while my paint was still wet. I want this to blend together and give me that streaky two-tone effect. Now that our paint is dry, I took a pencil and I'm going to start going over those little lines that are gouged into this that are supposed to look like shiplap. Now I wanted to tell you that if you can't find one of these old clocks at the thrift store, you could get one of the wood rounds that they sell at Home Depot, Lowe's, Hobby Lobby. They even have some now at the Dollar Tree. And you could use that because you can paint it to look like shiplap even if it's not. All you have to do is use a pencil and sketch on some lines and then use your finger and smudge over it and it really does give it that shiplap look. I also like doing this for distressing, so I went around the edges of my clock and gave them some definition as well. Now I want to put my clock face on. I wanted this to look as much like the one from Etsy as possible, so I saved a picture of their clock and I blew it up, I printed it out in pieces, cut it out and taped it together, and now I'm just going to use some carbon paper and transfer these letters onto my clock. Now you don't have to go this route. You could freehand this or you could use your cutting machine and cut out letters however you want to do it. This was just the way that I chose to put mine on. Once I get my numbers 
transferred over to my clock face. Then I use my Jot Permanent Marker and fill them in. Now I use these markers because I don't have a steady hand when it comes to painting and these give me more control. But you could use your paint and a paintbrush. Again, you could cut these out of vinyl however you want to do it. Now that my numbers are on my clock face, I just take my sanding block and go over it just slightly just to give it a little bit of distressing. And then I'm gonna put a new hanger on my clock. The one that was on there had it hang so that the lines went up and down and I wanted them to go across. So I had to put a new hanger on there. Then we just put our new clock mechanism in. I was doing pretty good in the beginning, but after I got that first hand on there, I could not get that second one. So I called my husband and he was sweet enough to come and finish putting it together. It's really not hard, y'all. I just couldn't get those little screws on there with my fingers. And there's our finished project. I'm really happy with how this one came out. It's not exactly like the one from Etsy, but it is close enough. I really like having this in my office. And again, if you can't find one of these old clocks, you could use a wood round and you would come out about the same price. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this grapevine wreath that I got from the thrift store. I took a bunch of stuff off of it. I find these all the time, but if you don't find them there, you can always get one at a craft store. This stuffed bunny that I got from the thrift store, it was a March of Dimes bunny and I thought it was so cute. They had a lot of stuffed bunnies that day. Some twine some florals and greenery from my stash. Some of this came from the Dollar Tree, Walmart. I pulled some from old arrangements that I had gotten from the thrift store, whatever you have on hand. Some eggs from the Dollar Tree, some floral wire, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I love making wreaths with these grapevine wreaths because it's so easy to put your pieces on and you don't have to cover the whole thing. I love the rustic look of them. I wanted to attach my bunny to my grapevine wreath and my way of doing that was to cut some floral wire and I threaded one piece through the back of its head and then I cut another piece and I threaded it through the bottom back of my bunny. Once I got my wire threaded through there, now I can just take it and I fold the end in half and I feed it through my grapevine wreath. Then I'm gonna feed the other side through and I can twist it up in the back and this is going to hold it in place. I won't even need glue for this. Now we will take the wire from the bottom of the bunny. We're gonna stuff it through the grapevine wreath, twist it up in the back and she will be secure on our wreath. I'm just gonna trim up those ends and then push it in so that it doesn't scratch your door. Now, I wanted one of my ears to stay up, so I put a little bit of glue on there to hold it in place, and then I like the other one flopped over. Once I got my bunny in place, I like to take my florals and I kind of cut them apart and just figure out where I want them. This is a lot of sticking it in, pulling it out, adding to it, just seeing where you want things to go. You just want this to be pleasing to the eye. To me, there's no right or wrong way to do this as long as you like how it looks. Now, I like to add in some different colors. I had this peachy orange color that I was using because it complemented my rabbit really well. And then I had these gorgeous ranunculus that I had gotten from Walmart that I wanted to add in there. They're a little more on the pink side, but they still looked good in it. I added some white cherry blossom looking flowers, some of my, um, vine ivy that I had left over. I put some of it in there. We're going to add in some greenery. You just keep going until you like it. Then I'm going to add a couple of my eggs in there. I decided to just use the orange ones since I had so much of this 
peachy pinky color already I didn't want to use the pink eggs and the good thing about this was once I got everything arranged the way I wanted it to I found that I had to do very little gluing to hold it in place I am going to cut the stem off of this big flower that I had and I'll put a little bit of glue on it because it is my anchor I want to make sure that it's going to stay in the place that I put it and then for the other pieces I would just kind of go around see if they were stuck down in there well if they weren't I would try to just shove them down in there and sometimes I would add just a drop or two of glue but I didn't use a lot because I like being able to take things off of these and reuse the grapevine wreaths once you're happy with how everything is, we're going to make a hanger. I'm just going to cut off a piece of twine, fold it in half, I feed it up through my grapevine wreath, then I stick those tails in the loop that I made. We're going to tie a knot, leave in another little loop, trim it off, and we have a hanger. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this lamp that I found at Goodwill Outlet for $1.49. Just look at all that beautiful detail work. This lamp shade that I got from Goodwill Outlet for 99 cent, some Krylon spray paint in rose petal pink, some Waverly chalk paint in ivory, some fabric flowers from Hobby Lobby, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this lampshade was perfect for my lamp, but they had wrote on it in marker and it wouldn't come off. So after I talked to Kay, she suggested spray painting it. So I grabbed this Krylon spray paint in rose petal pink, and we're going to take it outside and give it a really good coat of paint and leave it to dry. While we're waiting on that to dry, we're going to go ahead and paint our base of our lamp. I love all the detail work that's on this, and as soon as I saw it, I knew that it could be a beautiful shabby chic piece. So I'm going to give this a good coat of paint. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory, and I actually ended up giving it two coats of paint. I let it dry, and then I gave it another one. After the first one, it was just a little streaky, and that was probably okay because I'm going to be distressing it, but I wanted it to be solid. Once my paint is dry, I took a fine piece of sandpaper, this is just the sandpaper from the Dollar Tree, and I start going around this and getting all that detail work to pop out. You're just going to go over it as much as you want, whether it's a heavy hand or a light hand, until you make that shine. The thing that I love about these pieces from the thrift store is that when you see them, if they don't exactly match your style or they're not your colors, Try imagining it with a different color or a fresh coat of paint. The beauty about these pieces is that it takes very little work to turn them into beautiful pieces. I also painted and distressed the finial that goes on top of this lamp. Now that our lampshade is dry, look at that gorgeous shade of pink. I am in love. <laughs> we are going to decorate this with some of these fabric flowers. These come in a roll from Hobby Lobby. They're like $6.99 for a roll, but every other week they're 50% off, so you get them for $3.50. I cut them apart and trim off that mesh, and then I simply use hot glue and glue them around the base of this. I think this gives it such a pretty romantic look, and it is right up my alley, y'all. Once we get these around the bottom of the lamp, we're going to do the same thing around the top. I think this just kind of finishes it up and ties it all together. Y'all, I fell in love with this piece. I was going to give it to my friend's granddaughter, but I think I'm going to end up keeping it in my office. Once we get these on here, we're going to put this back together and it'll be finished. Thank you. 
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old sign that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet, but you could use an old piece of board or a sign from the Dollar Tree. This heart that I sketched out, I will link it below if you would like a copy. Some wooden letters from the Dollar General. Some crushed gravel. I got this from Ikea about three years ago, but you can get something very similar from the Dollar Tree. Chalk paint. Paper tape super glue fix all adhesive i get this from the dollar tree my glue gun and some glue sticks and some tools from my work caddy the first thing i did was finish removing the vinyl from this sign it looked like someone had started and maybe got frustrated and quit but it actually came up real easily i just took my little scraping tool and would get up under it and i was able to peel it right off I love using these old signs from the thrift store. Um, they're normally really cheap, especially if you have a Goodwill outlet near you. I think I only paid like 79 cents for this one. And the quality on these is much higher than the ones that you get from the Dollar Tree. The ones from the Dollar Tree are thin and they have a tendency to warp, but a lot of these signs like this are really thick wood and they work so much better. Once I got all the vinyl off of this, I gave my sign a good coat of paint. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I did cover the front and all the sides, but I did not worry about painting the back of this one because it was already finished and it looks really good the way it is. It took about a coat and a half to cover this. I also went ahead and took out the letters um, for my project. I took out the letters to spell listen to your and I'm giving them a good coat of chalk paint as well I painted the front and all the sides making sure I got down in the little um, nooks and crannies of this but I did not worry about the back because this is going to be glued down and you won't be able to see it now I want to give this sign some dimension, so I went back to my favorite form of distressing. I grabbed my pencil and I just kind of rubbed it along those edges and then took my finger and smudged it in. This sign has a beveled edge to it and I really wanted to make that stand out. I also want to give my letters some dimension and um, a little bit of definition. So I did the same thing with them. I just used my pencil, rub it along the edges there, and then just kind of smudge it in. And this gives it some really soft definition. This project is going to be a tone on tone type project, but I did want my letters to stand out enough that you could read what it said. Now I'm taking that heart that I traced out and just using my pencil and scribbling over the back of this. Sorry I was making the table shake. You can tell I was really working on scribbling on this. Once I get this scribbled on the back, I'm just going to flip it over onto my board and then trace around my heart and that is going to transfer it onto my board. This is the same method we used when we were kids. I could have used carbon paper, but it has a tendency to smudge and I didn't want to take that chance, so that's why I went ahead and used this method. Now I'm gonna take those little letters and I'm just kind of figuring out where I want them to be. I did know that I wanted some of them to go into my heart. So I'm just kind of playing around with them. And then once I get a general idea, I use my ruler and I did write down my little markings because I wanted to remember where I had them. And then I just make a little mark on each side of my sign and I use a piece of paper tape and I stretch across there from side to side. And and this just makes it even for me when I put my letters down and I know that they're going to go across evenly. Now we're going to lay out that first word and once I get the layout for that I just use some hot glue and glue down my letters. Once all my letters are glued down I pull off the tape and I start with the next row. I lay them out, glue them down, and then I'll take off that tape as well, and then I did my last row. Now I want to fill in my heart with that black crushed gravel. I really thought this was gonna be a lot easier <laughs> to do with 
hot glue, but I saw that it just really wasn't working that well. Um, most of it didn't want to stay in that hot glue. So I ended up taking that super glue fix all adhesive that I get from the Dollar Tree and I just flooded the area inside my heart with it and then I would put the gravel down on top of it and I really did pile it up there. Once it's completely dry, we'll shake it off and get rid of the excess but I wanted to make sure that everything was covered. Now, this glue has a very strong smell, so you want to make sure you have some good ventilation. And you don't have to use this. You could easily use E6000. You just want to make sure that it's going to stick well and that you give it plenty of time to dry. Now that our heart is dry, I have shook off all the loose stones that I could get off. And now I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush, and I'm just gonna kinda spounce the paint into that gravel. I don't want to completely cover it, but as I said earlier, this is kind of a tone on tone project. So I do want to tone down um, the gravel that is on there. I want it to blend in a little more. Now, of course, I want it to have definition, and and that's why I used the black gravel instead of white gravel, but I did want to do a little bit of painting on it to tone it out. I didn't have to worry about putting a hanger on this sign because it already had a hanger on it. That's the beauty of using these old signs from the thrift store. And there's our finished piece. I really am pleased with how this one turned out. It's almost exactly the way I had it in my head and I am happy to hang this in my home. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using this shutter that I got from Habitat for Humanity for $3 two pieces of one by six lumber cut to 17 inches, four of these decorative brackets that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're $4.99 each, but I got them when they were 50% off, four of these knobs that I got from the thrift store, four little metal pails that I got from Hobby Lobby. You get them in the wedding section and you get all four for $3.99. Two of these heavy duty ring hangers, I got them from Hobby Lobby, Waverly chalk paint, my drill, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was clean up my shutter. I just grabbed one of my Mr. Clean eraser pads and it took off almost all of this. There are some areas where the paint is chipped, but for the most part, it cleaned it really well. Then I just removed the hardware. For the hinges, my screwdriver wouldn't work, so I just kind of used what I had on hand. And then I used my sanding block and I just smoothed out those areas. Now I did put a little bit of spackling in the holes where the hardware had been. This is going to be on the back and you won't see it, but I just wanted to fill them in. Now we're going to paint our shelves. I started off with this white color, but it was way too bright. So I ended up switching over to my Waverly plaster and it blended in perfectly with my shutter. I gave both of my shelves two good coats to make sure that I had equal coverage. I painted the top, the bottom, and all of the sides. Now for my wood, I get that at Home Depot at the back of the store. They have a cart back there and they put their damaged wood that they can't sell for a full price. And I got this eight foot piece of one by six for $2. I was able to cut off both of these 17 inch shelves and I still have quite a bit of it left. Now I'm going to paint my little brackets. I really love how these look with this dark metal, but nothing else on my shelf was dark, so I thought maybe it needed to blend in a little more. I just took that same plaster colored paint that I painted my shelves with, and I gave all of my little brackets a good coat of paint. Now I did figure out pretty quickly that you have to use light coats on these. I would dip my brush into that lid there and then I would kind of dab it off on that wet wipe and then I just gave it light coats of paint. Once it dries, I go back and give it another coat. I think I actually ended up doing three on each one and by the time I was finished, it had that really pretty creamy color that I was looking for. 
Now that everything is dry and we've got all of our pieces, I'm going to start working on putting it together. The first thing I did was flip it over and put my two brackets where I wanted to hang them. And I'm going to go ahead and mark where the screws are gonna go. And then I just go ahead and drill two little pilot holes in there to make it easier to put the screws into this wood. Once I got my pilot holes drilled, then I flipped over my shutter and I took four of these little knobs that I got from the thrift store and kind of spaced them out at the bottom until I liked how they looked. I did use my ruler to kind of make sure that they were the same width from the sides and then I just spaced them out the best I could. I think I was a little bit off on one of them, but that's fine. And then I used my pokey tool and I marked where they're going to be. Once I did that, I just took my ruler and made sure that they were an equal distance from the bottom and marked that off with a pencil. And then I used my drill and drilled all the way through this to make a hole for my screws to go through. Now that I have that part done, I am going to start working on my shelves. I set them up so that I could make sure I had them in the right place where I want them to be and evenly spaced. And then I just used my pencil and I marked the shelves and the shutter everywhere that a screw was gonna go. I want to drill pilot holes. Then I took my little drill and I used one of my smaller build drill bits and just drilled pilot holes everywhere that the screws are going to be going on the shutter and on the shelves. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach those hanging brackets onto the back of this. I knew once I started putting shelves and stuff on the front of this, I wasn't going to be able to lay it flat, so I wanted to take care of this first. Once I finished that, I went ahead and took the screws from these cabinet knobs and went ahead and put them through the shutter so that it would make it easy to just flip it over and add the knobs. And then it's just a matter of screwing on your knobs and it's ready to go. Now we're going to attach our brackets. I had to use a regular screwdriver to put in those top screws. It's really tight up there and when I tried to use my drill, it just was not working. It was tearing up my screws and they weren't going in well. So I ran out to the shed and got a regular screwdriver and did it by hand. Now once I got down there to the bottom and those screws, I was able to use my drill and those went in a lot easier. Once I got my bracket on, then I just stood my shelf up behind it and held it in place and drove my screws home. Now we've got our top shelf on, we're going to do our bottom one the exact same way. I screw in my little brackets. And then I add my bottom shelf and that is all there is to this project. Simple, easy, and beautiful. And there's our shelf. I am so proud of this piece. It turned out even better than what I had in my head. There it is with a little bit of decoration on it. This probably isn't what's going to stay on this because it's going to be moved down to my craft room, but I am so in love with this piece. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Kay and I received a message from one of our subscribers asking us if we would do a set of angel wings. She explained that she had lost her husband and that the wings had taken on a special meaning for her. So of course we wanted to give it a shot. The first thing I did was take a piece of paper and sketch out a wing. Once I had it where I liked it, I cut it out and then traced that onto a piece of foam board. 
I flipped it over and traced it in mirror image so that I would have a set. Now I'm just going to take my Zacto knife and go around each wing and cut them out. I did have to go and change my blade. If you try cutting foam board with a dull blade, it catches and tears. But once I got a fresh blade, it did perfectly. I took a piece of sandpaper and just went around on and smoothed out any rough edges. I knew that I wanted to use crab sticks to make my wings so that they would look like a wood sculpture. Kay suggested that I use the shingles that you use whenever you're making a dollhouse. They sell those at Hobby Lobby in a big bag. And in the end, I decided not to because they're about $8 a bag. But I will tell you that after cutting all these little crab sticks, I wish I had. So if you're going to be making one of these, I can tell you that it's worth the little bit extra to go ahead and buy those shingles that are pre-cut. Now I just take my pieces, I use both ends of the craft stick and I start layering them onto my wing. As you go up, it makes a gap in between the wings and the foam board. So in the beginning, I would just take the little pieces from the middle of the stick and kind of stick them down under there to fill that gap. But then the gap got to be too big. So I started taking scrap pieces of the foam board and gluing it on just to build that up. Now, this is going to look like a mess on this first wing, but I promise you stick around. I learned my lesson and I fixed it on the second wing. I just used a combination of the craft sticks and the foam board and just kept building it up until I had my craft sticks laying down and I honestly thought this looked like feathers laying on top of each other. Once I had my long feathers done, I wanted to be able to do something that would give me texture at the top that reminds you of those small feathers that angel wings have at the top. So I took some pine cones and I broke off the pieces and I used the little pointy piece as my texture. I just break them off and I kept gluing them on top of each other. Now these are sticky, so watch your fingers. And I also baked my pine cones in the oven to kill any little bugs that was in it. But I don't think I left them in there quite long enough because there was still a couple of ants that came out of the pine cones. So make sure you bake them for at least, I'd say, 10 minutes. As I filled up that area, I really love the texture that the pine cone was giving me at the top of my wing. Here you see that I got a clue and I cut out some extra wings out of the foam board that I had left over. Now I can put down my little wooden pieces and then when I get to the point where I need to build it up, I can just mark the foam, cut it and glue it down and I don't have to deal with all those little pieces. It does take two of the craft sticks to equal the same width of the foam. So I did still use the little pieces that I was breaking off from the middle of the craft stick up under the first layer. And then after the second layer, I would put down another piece of foam board and then I would use the craft sticks and I kept going in that order until I had it built up the way I needed it to be. Once I got my wings finished, I needed to do something with those sides because you could see the mess that I had made building up the wing. So I took some of the caulk mastic that I got from the Dollar Tree and I would just squeeze it on and then use my finger to run it around the side. And I did leave it textured because I really liked how that looked. Now I'm just going to take my lighter and I ran it over the top of it really quick to melt those little glue strings that you get when you use hot glue. After all of that was finished, I took some white chalk paint and I went over both wings, painting them real well. 
I made sure that I got in the little cracks of the wings. And then at the top, I took the brush and kind of spounced it on so that I got in between all the little nooks and crannies that my pine cone made. The caulk is actually white, but it was a different color white than what I was using in the chalk paint. So I actually went around that too and gave it a good coat so that it would all match. I did want to distress this a little bit. I didn't want to leave it a solid white. So I went to my old go-to and I took an old eyeshadow palette and a stencil brush and started brushing it on. And I was getting a slight bit of distressing on it, but not as much as I wanted. So I ended up taking one of the furniture repair markers and I would rub it against my brush and then rub it onto the wings. And between it and the eyeshadow, I got exactly the look that I was wanting. I have this palette board that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet that I'm going to use to mount my wings on. I got as much of the plastic off the back as I could and I cut off the twine and then I just glued my wings down to the front of the palette board with my hot glue. I wanted to distress my board a little bit too, so I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my stenciling brush and just did a little dry brush effect over it to highlight some of the boards. I want to make a shabby chic flower to go in the middle of my wings. So I took my burlap and pulled the string out to give me a cutting line. And then I took some lace I had on hand and cut it to the same width as my burlap. I wrapped the pieces around my hand just to give it a loop. You can see it over in the left hand side. I'm sorry that I was out of camera range, but once I got my loop, I just kind of gathered it up in the middle and put a rubber band around it. And then I take my scissors and I cut those ends to open it up. And then once I get that done, I take the scissors and just start whacking at it. There's no rhyme or reason. I just kind of cut at it to give it that shabby look. And the more you cut, it's going to open up like a flower. And then I just kept pulling at it and trimming it to kind of round it up until it looks somewhat like a flower. Now I'm going to do my burlap the same way. You can see that I'm wrapping the rubber band around the center of it. And then I take my scissors and cut open the ends. And then I just start cutting on it. Burlap does this cool thing when you cut on it. It actually starts falling apart. And I really like that. So you can see that I pulled on it with my fingers and big chunks of it fell out. And it really started looking rough and had that shabby look that I was wanting. Once I had them both ready, I just stacked them on top of each other and fluffed it a little more. And then I used my hot glue to glue them together. I took one of these, it's pearl with like some stones around it. It looks like a little flower. I get them from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I glued it into the middle of our flower just to give it a little bit of bling. I put it on my board and kind of fluffed it around just to get the look that I was looking for. And then I took some hot glue and attached it to my wings. And there's our set of angel wings. I am really happy with how these turned out. I'm not sure the camera does them justice, but when you are looking at them in person, they really look like a set of sculptured wings and I absolutely love them. I hope our subscriber does too. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.